Happy day. Thank all of you for joining me and those that will watch this all over the world. I'm happy to be back and be back with you. We are live. I had a couple interesting things I want to share with you and you probably can look at the title and it says not knowing. And I shared with you earlier today that we were going to look at intent and I believe it was principle. And as I read and as I study and we're working out of Genesis 47 and I ask those across, but I want to give a couple uh, notifications to my good friend Castro. Uh, no, Carlos Castro. I don't know if you're in Mexico or if you're in the U.S., but thanks for the shout out. And to Miss Teresa Henry, who is in, in New Jersey, a great financial advisor. We're going to bring her on. And of course, to those that are in Roanoke, Virginia and across the country and all of the virtual campus and of course, to the mother campus. I want to share something with you, and as I was reading it, and that's why I asked you to read Genesis 47 every day. And I noticed today that when I was reading, or a few minutes ago, that it talked about uh, Genesis 47 in the NIV version. It says, Joseph went to Pharaoh, my father and brothers with their flocks and their herds, everything they own have come from the land of Canaan, into Gosha. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Verse three, Pharaoh asked his brothers, what's your occupation? And what I find interesting here in talking about trying to one, establish ourselves and then set up something that is plausible that can bring us more than a typical income that family or company uh, provides you with. But when I look at this, I look at, first of all, there's a couple words we're going to deal with. And the first word is assess. And so when I look at it, it is like Joseph assessed the dream that Pharaoh had, but at the same time, his brothers was unaware of what they had. Now, to today's people and to the Gen Zs and the Millennials and the Gen X and the Gen Y, nobody thinks anything about flocks and herds and land. It's kind of minute. Here's the truth. Everything they took to Pharaoh was something that produced. I'm going to ask you a question. How does your dreams and ideas go to other people and they can produce them and you can't? I'm, I'm, I, because <clears throat> they had an occupation, but yet they depended on someone else and gave what they had that would produce to someone else. But why couldn't it produce for them? Not knowing. Many people do not know who they are, what they are, what innate inheritance they have, and what natural abilities that they can. And to tie that in with a spiritual birthright is something that will set you apart rather than trying to follow the group. So the first thing is assessing. That word means, and you break it down, first of all, you have to assess the talent. You have to assess the skill. You have to assess the dreams. All dreams don't come from you. It could be a dream in your family. It could be attached to someone else, but you can put the pieces together. I always say this to potential people, you know, and some people kind of frown on the technology of the word entrepreneurship. They can see it for someone else, but they can't see it for themselves. How can you encourage someone else, but you cannot encourage yourself? How can you support someone else and you cannot support yourself? Because when you assess it, here's what happens. You determine the talent. Everything here in the first you know, three verses talks about Talent, skills, dreams, need, and opportunity. 
Because Pharaoh asked him, what's your occupation? The second word that I will share with you is the word called collaboration. Now, in order to collaborate, you have to think outside the box that you're in. If you want to be in the bigger box, you cannot think all the ideas are going to come from your box. So you're going to have to collaborate with other people, which means you're going to have to have time to think and create a think tank. And sometimes it's a one on one, you yourself, your gift, your innate inheritance and your spiritual birthright to see what direction you should be in. Now you have to plan. Now, when you do this, here's the whole point. And I want to ask you a serious question right off the bat. Can your present job, present situation, present status of your financial uh, economics carry you to the finish line? Why is that significant? I've talked to several people that a little bit older, some younger, some don't see it. It's like, hey, I'll just get another job. Well, here's something that will affect everybody. Health. We're not guaranteed to be as healthy as we are today, tomorrow. So your health, my health, your friend's health, your spouse's health can affect your ability to perform, even if it's thinking. I spoke to a group on Sunday about spiritual concussions and they were kind of dumbfounded because that's not a word that we normally hear in a church realm. But there is a thing called spiritual concussions. So here's the thing. Are you missing the opportunity? And, uh, and are your gifts or your gift could be right in your hands, right in front of you. But you have no association with it because you're too busy looking at what others have and giving away what can produce for you to submit to them. I want you to think about that. So here's what has to happen. When you start collaborating, you have to join a group and someone needs to mentor you. Someone needs to, and, and your mentor needs to be someone that is doing it, living it, and have experience in it and willing to share the knowledge. So this is why Joseph took his brothers to Pharaoh because Pharaoh asked them a typical question. In fact, maybe one of the first questions he's had for them, you know, what is your occupation? They said, your servants are shepherds. I want to ask you a question. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as someone that has the ability to sit at the table? Or do you see yourself answering to someone who is sitting at the table? Let's take a pause on that. Because this is exactly what they did. Everything they were seeking, they already had. Here's the difference between Joseph interpreting the dream to Pharaoh is number one, Pharaoh was willing to search for something outside of himself for greater information. And many people who don't want to seek outside of their own knowledge will drown by their own foolishness. Because remember, it is his brothers who sold him away. So then he went through his dramatic time in life and then he re-arose or re-rose to prominent. And now they got to deal with the person they don't want to have anything to do with. How many people in your family are ignoring your gifts and your ability and your capability and your insight? Because it's not their favorite. It's not their pick. So the first word is assess. You have to assess what is taking place and somebody has to be thinking. Everybody can, and, and it happens in work all the time, especially if you do entrepreneurship. People will, will look at you and say, well, you're not doing anything. You're just sitting in front of a laptop. You're just talking on the phone. You're on a desktop. You're somewhere in a room with a bunch of people. 
You're doing today's work. There are people who have to see contracts for tomorrow and next month and next year's work. So are you cutting out on break, leaving early, coming back late, not meeting your quota, taking days off that you hadn't earned? Does you feel like somebody owe you something? Which are you? The person answering to the voice at the table or a person sitting at the table? Because many times you have the same thing that the person have who's sitting at the table. The problem is you didn't do anything with it. You didn't plant it. You didn't learn it. You didn't expand it. You didn't grow it. You didn't even care about it. So one of the things you have to look for is what's your point of value? So the first word is assess. You have to assess. In the first three verses, I mean, we could work that for a continuation, but the reality is, are you willing to put the time in? Do you want to be told or do you want to lead? You can't lead unless you've been developed. And it's hard to be developed without mentors. Because if you're thinking in your only small box, there's a whole scope of things in life that you're missing. So again, I say Joseph went and told Pharaoh. Someone, I, I heard my uh, cousin, I always call him the great Daniel Coyne, and I'm probably going to tear this up. So if he sees this, he can correct it. He says, you always need a champion in the room. You can be great. You can be qualified. But if you don't have someone in the room and you're not accessible to meet new people and to get out of your comfort zone, it's going to be challenging to maximize whatever gifts and talents you have. And I say this again, and I didn't get very far this evening, but I'm going to try to speed up here and give you the other pieces. First of all, you have to assess. So when I look at uh, Genesis 47, it says, and Joseph went to Pharaoh, someone that's well, not in the room, someone who owns the room. My father and my brother. So now here's my lineage right here. With their flocks and herds, everything that produced, you're taken to a man to tell you what to do with your gifts and talents and everything you have, land, herds, and flocks. What is it that you can do that you're not doing because you won't listen? Oh, I forgot. You want to look like money, but you really don't have no money. You have the same hours as millionaires and billionaires. You might need to watch the company you keep. And somebody said, well, I don't understand. How does that make sense? Why pour into a bucket? that has a massive hole in it. It's a waste of product. It's a waste of time. And nothing can be yield because nothing can be maintained or sustained. Think about that. So, so here's how we look at this. We look at this this way. All right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you um, because the first two words is assess, collaborate. And the third word would be choose. What you mean? Choose. Let me explain it to you. When you choose, it means you have to make a commitment for three to five to seven years. Very few things, I won't say nothing, but very few things can, it can be successful, but not sustainable. So you have to commit to it. And I tell potential people, whether it's your family, whether you're trying to do something, how do I best say it? You're not going to get all you need and want out of one vessel, one job. The demand, the cost of living, 
the index is too high. The question I say to you, you have to choose a direction. And in choosing that direction, you have to be mentored and get people who can season you, train you. Because if we put you on the big stage, as some of the baseball players are now, who can play good in the regular season, But when the pressure's on, they low on talent and performance. And you have to commit to learning. I have to learn a new way. I have to think different. Because those ahead already know. One of the things, and this wasn't one of the words, but I'm going to give it to you. I look at this. As they had everything they need, but they were lacking knowledge. The lack of knowledge many times come from complacency. So many of you who will watch this around the world, and thank you for tuning in to Successful Living with Reginald Campbell, House of Reconciliation, and thanks for the support of Upstate Resource Center. I say to you, and I forgot about chat about life, and, and I think that might be it, hopefully. Are you living in a lane of complacency? So when a storm comes, you're not ready, you're not prepared. One of the things that made Joseph different than his brothers is he functioned on principles. Which means he had character and integrity. And he designed a infrastructure within himself. So when he dealt with Pharaoh and opposition, he had a firm, solid base. I'm going to ask you a question. What's your base besides your attitude? What's your base besides the little name brands or whatever you wear? What's your base besides your job? Where is the point of your character and integrity and dignity and honesty in order to move yourself forward. So now the third word I, I gave you was, I think it was assess, collaborate, choose. And I threw an extra one in there called complacency. When you are complacent, and I, I want to dig into this and want to take about maybe three to five more minutes here. Here's the problem. They were complacent. They didn't seek new knowledge. And they became stuck in time. So we're in 2024. And there are some people that are struggling with the existence and think they're still in 1975, 1984. Some people are still stuck in 2000. Some are stuck in 2005, 6, 10, 12. It doesn't matter. When you are complacent, you're void of new innovative information. So I just gave you the other word. Complacency leads to lack of innovation. If your flock, according to the NIV in Genesis 47, can produce for someone else, if your herds can produce for someone else, if you can work and make someone else successful, why can't you work and make yourself successful? And that way you will have a hard decision whether to stay with a company or to leave. And I always tell people, never leave a company until everything you're getting from that company, if you get that opportunity, that you have enough service base, client base, to give you the benefit to invest in your 401k, which we know is going away, but you got to do something while it's here. To invest in a, a Roth IRA, to invest in things and give you a comfortable living while you create multiple streams of income. I thought it was just going to come out of the sky. I was looking for manna. Not knowing that I needed seed. While you were looking for a once in a lifetime miracle. You could have planted. A whole acre. Of grain. I had to pause on that one to let you think. While you're looking for the hookup, 
And they going to look out for me. And my friend worked there. You could have finished school while you're working three jobs. And most people who work two and three jobs create more debt. How does that happen? There's no principles. Last but not least, I guess this will be the fifth word. There are benefits for playing the long game. Whatever dreams you have, they're not over. They're not dead. Well, what's wrong with them? You're not paying them any attention. You put them in a category of hallucination because you want the results, but not necessarily to the work. If you put in the work, you don't have to worry about the results. They'll be there. In these first three verses, had these brothers not sold their brother and gave him away, well, they sold him. Had they listened and didn't become complacent, a lot of the hardship could have been avoided. I am going to teach you if you listen. But see, here's the thing. This is no quick journey. This is something you need to tune into every week. And my commitment is to try to move it faster. But it has to be laid solid. There's no quick fix to success. No. But if you're willing to put in the time, I'm willing to give you the steps, the four words you need to look at. And I'm going to give you this last conclusion. Assess. Collaborate. Choose. Stay away from complacency. And understand the benefit of the long game. When you do that, success is coming. But if you're looking for excitement, it will always go out the door because it has no sustainability. I want you to get focused. Now, let me give you a little insight where we're going. Because I know somebody is saying across the world, well, what do I do? I want you to think. I want you to talk to family about things that your grandmother, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, I want you to try to find a little bit about your lineage. Because in that, you may find your story. And when you find that, you dream that, you believe that, then you have a choice to make. Move for someone else to control what I have. I build my own and produce it for the masses. Here is a secret. Find a need. Create a service. Build a business. You may find yourself. God bless you. Remember, just the very things they took to a man that they already possess. How does your gifts and talents produce for other people? But it never produces for you. Find a need, create a service, and you probably will find your gifts. Thank you. Peace out. I will talk to you soon.